On today's CoinGeek Conversation, how Bitcoin SV kept the electricity on in the South African home of my guest Heidi Patmore, the marketing consultant for CentBee. Together with the founder of the CentBee wallet, Lorian Gamaroff, we'll see a demo of how easy it is to use CentBee for everyday transactions, such as topping up your credit on your mobile phone. You're listening to CoinGeek Conversations with Charles Miller. Right, so now um, once you have your CentBee wallet, uh, what we've got now uh, for uh, certain countries and now in South Africa, we've got a new buy option in the wallet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and select from the large number of services that we've got bundled in there, the mobile airtime. So I'm going to now purchase a mobile airtime for Heidi's phone over there. And I've got her number in here. Okay, so I choose mobile airtime and um, now what I need to do is just to make sure that it's Heidi's number, I'm going to choose South Africa. Um, choosing her network provider, so you're on Vodacom mm -hmm. and the number is going to be... So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy uh, 20 rand worth yeah, of 20, 20 rand worth of, of airtime, okay. So uh, what we now see is I've chosen to spend 20 Rand buying, uh, buy, to buy some airtime for Heidi. It's done the calculation in my wallet, which is 0 0.0065, about uh, a worth of BSV. And now as soon as I hit buy and I confirm, what's going to happen now is um, the Bitcoin transaction is going to go through to the CentB system. The CentB system is going to see that uh, uh, that amount of Bitcoin needs to purchase um, airtime. The transaction has now gone through and we've now made a request to our value-added services provider to purchase 20 Rand worth of airtime on Heidi's phone. And in a few seconds, what she should receive on her phone is uh, an SMS from the telco confirming that uh, she's received 20 Rand worth of airtime. So that's really how simple it is. Um, and uh, with all the other services, it's pretty, okay. it's pretty much the same thing. So here, the SMS has arrived. Oh, there we go. And it now says 20 rands worth of airtime. So the, um, the, the whole process is going to be exactly the same for, uh, well, it is exactly the same for all the other value-added services. So here we go. Um, the SMS here says, thank you for recharging. Vodacom has given you 20 Rand extra airtime. Because it's airtime, it's just on your phone account. And so there's no further step to be taken in that case. But if it was something different, like uh, electricity or something, then Heidi would be able to make use of a code or something that had been delivered to, to actually buy the thing. Is that right? That's correct. So I, I've done that before. So uh, what I will do is I'll just go and look at my transactions. Um, I've chosen the buy electricity option in CentBee. And if I go and view the transactions uh, that I have made, um, I'll go look at the most recent one. And um, what you can see now here, and I, I can uh, send you a screenshot or I can show you on the screen and if you can see it there. But there is a, yeah. a blue um, yeah. bar with a long pin code about, uh, what's right. that? Uh, Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, about 24 digits. And um, that's 62.4 kilowatt hours. So what Heidi will now do is she will go and take this to her meter. She'll punch in that number and immediately 62 kilowatt hours will be loaded onto her pay-as-you-go meter. So that's really how simple it is. You know, uh, somebody can be doing this, you know, from wherever they are. They don't have to go travel, find a location where vendors, you know, worry about what time it is of day. So uh, it's an extremely convenient uh, way of purchasing electricity. And why I'm so happy about this and excited about it is because this was what was missing, you know, all those years ago when I was imagining people being able to do this. You know, um, I wasn't just trying to think of, you know, of a way to use Bitcoin. You know, it arose from a very specific need for the use the customers that we had. You know, uh, we were constantly trying to find ways for them to be able to purchase electricity using a digital 
payment method without having to have a bank account or a credit card. This, this was when you worked for an electricity company, was it? Yes, it was a startup. It was a, a smart uh, uh, energy company, and we were building out uh, smart grid utilities, uh, payment vending systems for prepaid electricity. And um, we had this issue, you know, how do we get uh, digital payments into the hands of people who aren't from the here, don't have those bank accounts? And Bitcoin always screamed out to me as a solution. But again, we didn't in those days have a way for people to get the Bitcoin, have the Bitcoin, and then use the Bitcoin. And now, after all those years, you know, uh, when I was trying to answer those questions from people who who like the idea of Bitcoin as an, an electricity payment system, you know, they would say, "How do I get it? How do I use it? How do I?" Sp well, now we have finally done it. You know, six, seven years later. Just going back to the um, the electricity meter code. If you went down to your local vendor and tried to do it that way, what, would they give you a piece of paper or how would they give you that information otherwise? Yes, that's exactly how it happens. You will go to, um, well, if you're doing it at a retailer, brick and mortar retailer, you go there, what they'll do is they'll print out a till slip and on that till slip will be that 20 digit number. So right. this is the standard way of doing it. Now all we've done is we've replicated that, that little receipt, um, that piece of paper, on Saint B Wallet itself, and so that's something that everybody understands. You know, um, they all are expecting a twenty-digit number to be able to punch into their meter. So, Heidi, what do you reckon will be the most popular of all those new services that you're offering? I think for the mass market, the electricity and mobile airtime and dot is going to be the most popular because that's where the the transaction volume will come from. Um, we know from our partner that we've been dealing with that 96% of their business is electricity. Um, and then you, the, the rest, a little bit more is airtime and data, and then the rest is the Uber and Netflix and Showmax vouchers. But having um, a way to now spend your Bitcoin, because you know a lot of people have been holding Bitcoin for years, and now they finally have a way, something to spend it on. So, for example, I've had this, um, my, my Saint B wallet here for, for a long time, since the beginning of Saint B. Um, and, and the balance is just sat, sat there, like the money's just sat in the wallet, you know, just hopefully going up and not going down. Which generally it does, like I think we, we come out, over, over the long time, uh, over the long term we've always come out tops, you know, like we've not, I've never lost money in crypto, um, if, you, if you're in it for long enough, you know. Well, um, but so far so good. So far, touch wood. <laughs> not if you started in 2019, I think. Exactly. So, um, but... You know, the other night I, when Lorian uh, created this, this this product, I actually have an, a prepaid electricity meter at my house because that's just uh, uh, when I moved in, that's what it had. And it was the first time I'd ever spent money on my Saint B wallet because I went and topped up with electricity with 50 Rand or whatever. And I was so excited about it that I just kept topping up more and more. Um, but, now, but now it's real. Now, now it's money. You know, like before I would top up through my bank account. Um, so, you know, you're taking from your bank account and you're topping up, it's like, you know, it's a grudge purchase. Being able to use your Bitcoin was like, ha, huh, I have all this money in my Bitcoin wallet and I can spend it on something. I, I think that, you know, I, I understand what you said about the long term stability of BSV and hoping that it doesn't, as is not going to be as volatile as it has been. But I think that if I was you, I would probably take a little check on the latest value of it. And if it had gone down by 10%, I might wait until the next day or wait until the next week. Mm. So there might be a little bit of a, an effect there still. I think that the convenience of it will outweigh the volatility, hopefully. Well, first of all, I think, if I'm not mistaken, BSV is a little less volatile than the other tri the other cryptocurrencies because people aren't speculating, like people don't buy BSV to speculate. Like people who buy BSV... <laughs> into BSV. Well, you the know? true believers, I think. So the true be... believers are there, you know, like yeah, people are buying just... it to for transactional use, you know. Um, there isn't this, no one buys BSV for store of value, like mm. it's transactional. And then when people start transacting, it will become a store of value automatically. Mm. So over time, it will. But you know, what we've also found is that, you know, what we have bundled into into our into Centbee 
is um, yes, of course, you know, electricity is there's a big market for electricity, but there's also a big market of uh, people like teenagers, for example, who right now, you know, if they want to use Uber or um, you know they want to um, have a, a, a PlayStation subscription or something like that, you know, right now it's always the fact that they have to go to their parents or whomever and get that transaction made. But you know um, what I you know what I've noticed and with my own son, you know. Um, he now has the ability to, um, you know, to not only top up his uh, data on his phone, but also to have a, a PlayStation subscription or um, or get an Uber ride without having to now uh, phone me up and ask. So, so I think that you know, uh, tr traditionally these sorts of services haven't really been accessible to you know a lot of teenagers who, who just haven't really you know gotten got the bank accounts and all that. Um, so I think that there will be a market of people who who never were really thinking about these types of products, but now have, the, have access to it. Now, of course, I'm talking specifically within an African context. You know, I'm sure that you know, in other countries it's different, but you know, there's certainly a large enough market uh, in Africa, and I'm, I'm sure as well in other emerging economies, you know, where now it's accessible. Now it's quite possible for mm. a teenager to, to be able to buy a, a PlayStation subscription or something. Yeah, exactly, and you don't want them necessary to have a credit card. <laughs> right. So, so I think that this is going to open up a market that hasn't been accessible before. You know, I think that there there will now be, be users that come on board that you know there haven't been there haven't there's no statistics around those those types of users because they've always just been you know out of and the, banked. Yeah, they're just of, not part of the system. Not part of the system. Now, mm -hmm. there's a digital payment system that they can you know easily be a part of. And I think that, that the independence will appeal to them. You know, like, you know, if you have to go to mom and ask for the credit card every time you want to buy something, or if you're at your girlfriend's house and you want to order Uber Eats, and mom, please, can I have the credit card details too? <laughs> you know, now it's, you know, like go on to Sendfee, top it from your account, or keep a little bit in your Sendfee wallet for when you might need it. I think even, so the teenager market for sure is, is going to, like this is going to be great for them. Um, the other market is also the person who maybe doesn't have a bank account, lives in a rural area, and the way that, you know, if they run out of electricity at nine o'clock at night, they have to walk maybe Well, it's closed. Well, it's closed. Not doing the shops are closed. <laughs> uh, they don't have a bank account. They basically will have no electricity till the next morning where they can walk to the shops. Or now, they want an Uber ride somewhere. Or want an Uber ride or something. So it's, it's just going to bridge that gap between, um, you know, the convenience of, of being able to keep a little store of value, keep a little bit of Bitcoin SV in your wallet for when you need it, instead of having to like walk to the shops to buy electricity. I mean, that's that's massively convenient. And I think that will, that, you know, the, the utility is what's going to win over the consumer in the, at the end of the day, not the, oh, has my, you know, one BSV gone up by 3% or down by 4%, you know, like, I don't think the end consumer is not going to, you know, like the average everyday consumer. Crypto people, you know, we look at the price, we look at the charts every day, but that's not the average consumer. They they just want, can I top up my electricity now? Yes or no, you know? Um, a couple of nights ago, my banking app went down. Now, that's the only way I usually buy electricity. And there was a, there was a, a bug at FNB, like everything went down. And my electricity started beeping at half past nine at night. <laughs> Thanks, Lauren, for building that because I was able to top up my electricity because uh, you built that. And literally, it was like, you know, if your bank does, you know, like if you can't transact in the usual way, now you've got a backup plan. Otherwise, I would have had to get in my car and drive somewhere at half past nine at night to try and somehow figure out how to buy electricity. And I was just like, no, this is this is the, the convenience of this is going to be massive. And, um, you know, this is people are going to start doing this. I think we're going to we're going to shift consumer behavior Absolutely. by having bought out this product, which mm -hmm. I think is the cool thing. I mean, it really does give meaning to the phrase digital cash, doesn't it? Exactly. exactly. It's, it's, but what is money now? It's and, like real money. And also, you know, uh, we haven't even spoken. I mean, it, uh, this is a, a microtransaction system. Remember, you know, uh, what somebody can do right now, I think the, the, the minimum for airtime is three rand, which is, what's that in dollars um, or pounds? Uh, it, cool. <laughs> it's like 5p. Mm -hmm. Something like whatever it is. Okay, I can work it out. So, so I mean, you can make a, a you know, a, a, a 10p transaction on here uh, for a, a service, mm -hmm. um, and that's the, the genius of Bitcoin SV. Yeah, for sure. Brilliant. Well, thank you both very much. It's a very impressive demonstration. So I'll, I look forward to seeing 
the cameras over your shoulders so I can see what was going on on those screens. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll take your word for it that it worked. <laughs> No, it worked. I we'll, mean, you heard the SMS going. We'll, we'll so. send you a video of the of the journey if you like. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Lorian. Thank you very much, Heidi. You're welcome. Bye now. Bye. My thanks to Heidi Patmore and Lorian Gamaroff, making their Scent Bee wallet work better than a banking app. Very impressive. Please like, share, and subscribe to CoinGeek Conversations. And please join me, Charles Miller, for another edition next week. Until then, thanks for listening and goodbye.